All right, sir. Now, we'll put this on the board. That's going to start our discussion today. See if you can answer these three questions. Where are students, what is, what are students supposed to be doing? I don't know if that's grammatically correct or not. What are y'all supposed to be doing right now between now and March the 18th? <laughs> okay, I can see where this is going, so I might as well just tell you the answer. You're supposed to be logging on to Starfish. You're supposed to be looking up a time that you can go by your advisor and set up an appointment. And then that your advisor will unlock your ability to what? Register. Register. Okay, you've got to now to March 18th. You had last week and the week before. We're going in our second or third week to be able to do this. If you don't do it, then what's going to happen? You're going to come back by here during the break or at Pendleton. Nobody's going to be there. And you're going to get mad at who? Me. Yeah. You're going to get mad at me because your advisor is on break and you didn't take four weeks to register. To unlock register. What happens on March 21st? If you do what you're supposed to up to the 18th, you register. Now, some of you have no freaking idea of what's next. Some of you don't. Most of you, if you're in college algebra, most of you are heading toward calculus, all right? If you're heading toward calculus, then you need to take what's called trig, college algebra, or college trig. It's called Math 111. Now, I'm going to talk to you all about that for a minute because I need to find out if you all are interested in having it at Anderson Campus and me teaching it because I need to tell my boss because they didn't put it on the schedule for fall even though we got 30 people in here. Anyway, so who's got a question on, somebody might have an advising question pertaining to math of what you need next, so ask away. Radiology, probably best to go through the calc route, and I'll tell you, I had an advisee come in the other morning, and she was in the radiology program at AMED, and she says she has to take college algebra. And she wanted to know what to take next. I said, well, what do you want to do next? She said, I have no idea. Because this is what happens when students go to, in the real world, they get out of college or they get out of their certificate program, they go into their work, and then they find out that they can make an extra 5000 a year by getting their bachelor's, or an extra 15000 a year by getting their master's or whatever. And here they go, back to school. And if that happens, if you take the college algebra and the college trig, then she said that I thought about going into physical therapy or something like that. Then she's going to need at least up to calculus or something like that. If you take the 110, 111 route, then you're good for any calculus above that, which is, I mean, any math above that, which is calculus. 95% of your research universities or your residential universities will take Calc 1 as math. I don't care if you're in underwater firefighting or if you're in engineering or pre-med. If you've got Calc 1 on your transcript, they'll go, oh, you've had Calc 1. Okay, that's taken care of. They're not going to do that with underwater firefighting math. If you take a math 120, which is a liberal arts math, I teach it, and you're in a science major, they're going to say, okay, we need to get your math. Oh, but I took math 120, and they're going to go, that ain't math. Okay, that's liberal arts man. I'm gonna I need real man. And what are they gonna say? You need to take Calc One. A lot of your research universities want to see Calc One on your transcript unless you're a liberal arts major. How do you know if you're a liberal arts major? If you don't mind, if you hate math and you hate science, then you're probably gonna be a liberal arts major. Alright? Unless you just got this obsession with being a history teacher, okay? One of those two things. All right, does that help answer your question? Yes. When in doubt, go Calc 1. Go trig. Now, a lot of you are in business. 
All right, now this is the this is where it gets sticky. All right, let me show you something. Let me draw it up on the board for you, especially if you're in business. Um, I'm telling you this to try to help you out because your advisor probably ain't gonna have a clue as far as math goes, believe it or not, unless they look it up. So I'm gonna draw some. I don't know if this is gonna work or not. Let, let me do this. Yeah, come on in whenever. That's fine. Math 101. Math 102. I don't know how I'm going to do this. Yeah, I'll do it like this. And then I'll put another one. <coughs> I'm making a quick flow chart for y'all. I don't know if it's going to work or not. And yeah, I'm doing this for y'all, so y'all are welcome. Yeah, studying right angle trig and identities. Some of y'all may have had math 101. Some of you may have had math 102. And there's the two branches. Now, let's say that you're undecided. Let's say that you have no clue what you want to do for the rest of your life. If that's true, you need to go this route. That looks awful. Let me redo that. Bring the old straight line. Bring the old. There we go. A lot of people say, well, I'm a business major. Well, if you are a business major and you've been business management, accounting, that, that route, and you're a third generation business person and your daddy was and granddaddy was a business accounting major and y'all got a business and you're going into business and there is no doubt in your mind, 150% that you're going to be going into business or accounting, then you need to do the 109, 130 route. Okay? But you're not in 109, you're in 110. So chances are, you're already in this route right here. But some of you may be saying, well, I took 110 because I didn't offer 109, and I want to go to business. Well, that's fine. The business calc you can take after 110. All right? But 90% of you, if you're in this route right here, if you're right here, then that means you're heading to these two right here. Okay? Some advisor has put you in that track for some reason. Okay? Um... Let's say you, you're in radiology, and let's say that you get your certificate, you work at MAD or Greenville or BFE, whatever, and you, after two years, you say, look, this sucks. I want to go back to school and be an engineer. Can she? She's done that CALC route, she can, CALC 1. She can go back to Clemson or wherever, and they'll see that CALC, and they'll say, okay, let's go ahead and get you started in engineering. If she's got business calc under her belt, what are they going to say? You need to go back around and take calc one. 
which you mean to take count, you need to take trig. So the difference between the two is trig. Okay? The business route don't have trig in it. Okay? What if you take trig without the two They'll take it. They, any, any major will take Calcone. Okay. Unless they're stupid. I'm serious. You are not going, you can go into medical school and they'll say, okay, you got Calc 1, that's checked off. Not even take a breath. But if you go into medical school with the other, the Math 230, they're going to say, well, you need to update your Calc. You need to go back and take Calculus, which you got to go back and take tree. Yes, sir. How high do you teach We go all the way to DPQ. Calc 1, Calc 2, Calc 3, DPQ. I've taught all of them. Mm -hmm. So, what's your major? I know that. What do you want to be when you grow up? Huh? Business or finance? 100% business or you might change your major? Well, I'll probably the math and science Yeah, you better go the math and science route. The only person that I would suggest do entirely on the left would be the person that's going to get their degree in business and go into their family business and start working. You see what I'm saying? If there's any doubt whatsoever, then I would go to the right, on the right hand side. And we've got another question. I know you've got questions because hardly any advisor knows, unless as a math teacher, knows this kind of stuff. So. Any? Secondary social studies, you probably don't need to go very high, but I don't, I'd have to look that up because I'm not a social studies person. You probably just need to take two college maths, which would be the college 110 and 111. Yes, sir. Psychology, you could get by with 120 and 110. I meant 110. And, uh, there's another two. Um, they come off of 102. I'm using 102 because some of you may have used, took 102. That's why I'm asking. I'm using it. 102 branches off of this way and this way. And it's called, um, let me use my, this one's called Math 120, which is Probability and Statistics, which after this class you can pretty much sleep in. And this class over here, Math 103, which after this class you can pretty much sleep in it. So I would probably suggest to you to take these two classes. And then you're going to need, are you Associate in Science or Associate in Arts? Um, you're Associate in Arts, then you probably just need two and a science. So take biology or physics, I meant not physics, astronomy or physical science. That's something else that you need to realize. Most of your fall classes, or most of your science classes, they start with their primary class in the fall. So if you want to take your first calculus, your first, I'm sorry, your first chemistry, your first physics, your first chemistry, I mean biology, your first physical science, your first astronomy. I don't even know if they have a second astronomy. But if you want to take any of those first classes, they're offered in the fall. So you need to, if you need to catch up on your science, you need to start that in the fall. Because you're not going to be able to take your first biology in the, in the spring because that'll be the second. So you need to start that in the fall. If that answers your question, you probably need to take the 120 or the 103, which you can take that now. You can take them both together if you wanted to. And I take both of those here usually every semester. Okay. Where are you transferring to? Are you? Well, they teach them over there. Okay, who's got another one? Yes, sir. I have four more semesters. Mm -hmm. That's the way it's usually done. What's your major going to be? You told me what? You don't know. Finance, but you don't know. I would go at least to count two. Because if you're a business major and you want to get your business major at Clemson, I'm just using Clemson because it's right down the road, okay? I'm yeah. not. Anderson University is saying. If you want to get a counting major, then you're going to have at least up to count two. Now, they want business one and business two, but if they see calc one and calc two, they'll take it. Okay, who's got another question? Secondary special ed, probably two college algebras. 
but you need to uh, get into the, uh, where are you going to go? You need to go into the AU handbook and look under that major and see. It probably just has two college transfer maps. I doubt very seriously you have to go to California. But you need to true take that and you'll have two college maps. Or you can take the 103 and the 120. But that depends on AU and the degree program. We've got another one. You can take 111 and 140 at the same time we're in. Oh, no. 111 or No, you cannot take it. If it's, if it's in this track right here, anything in this track right here, which means also count two, three, and if you cube, you take one before the other. What about a communication? Communication. Major or communication? Major, you probably just need liberal arts, which means the 120 and the 103. You've got two degree programs, pretty much. You've got science, and you have liberal arts. Liberal arts is anything, psychology, history, economics, anything that's not what? Science, math-based. What is science and math-based? Science, math, engineering, uh, computer engineering, computer science any of the sciences, any teaching of the sciences, any teaching of the math, that's the right-hand route right there. Okay? Any other questions? I don't have any questions. I can't believe that. Y'all just know what's going on. Okay. All right. Try to waste as much time as I could. <sighs> no, we can't. Because we can't talk about politics. We're supposed to vote for Cruz. We're not supposed to vote for anybody else. No, we're supposed to vote for Rubio. I'm sorry. Rubio is who we're supposed to That's who Romney told us to vote for. So we're supposed to vote for who Romney told us to vote for. And we're not supposed to think. We're supposed to get in line like cattle going to the slaughter. Did you got that? It doesn't matter if Romney lost twice. You're supposed to listen to him. Because the establishment tells you what to do. Y'all don't get that? Okay. Somebody pull out a syllabus. Not this whole syllabus. The whole syllabus is, is a waste of paper. The last page. Pull out the last page. What does Unit 3 say we go into? It's probably matrices, but we're going to skip that. Because you don't need that. Somebody look and pull it out for me. I didn't pull it up. you got to go through an act of Congress and go through Blackboard to pull it up. I ain't going to Blackboard. It probably don't work. I know somebody, at least, you know, I sent you all those. You were supposed to keep it in your notebook. Oh, I've got about 4,000 messages that I have. Is it this one? No, it's the one that looks like a spreadsheet at the back page. That's it. Let me see that. I'm pretty sure it's probably matrices, but, but I want to go into logarithms. Okay, it is logarithms. God, we're going to finish early. It really is early early in the semester because I don't spend a lot of time going over rehashing stuff in year one and two. I have to teach you the main stuff you need to know. So for unit three, we're talking about logarithms. Okay. Oh, what chapter is logarithms? Exponential logarithms, what chapter? Does it say what chapter it is? 5.3, chapter 5. All right, so if you got your books, turn to chapter 5. And I'll pull that up right quick for y'all. Oh, yeah, y'all's uh, y'all's test average for the first test. Hold on, let me find it. There we go. No, not that. The average for the first test so far is 91. I'm very happy with that. 
Average for the second test is 76. But I'm not worried about it because you got five times taken. Is that right? I think I gave you five times, didn't I? Yeah. So that means after about 150 problems, you should be able to get it. Yes? Um, you said for average form there, for our personal average, what we see is that what it is for right now? For the two, yeah, because right now I haven't put all the weights in and everything. What you need to go by is your test. Okay. If you've got an A and an A, then I probably give you an A for a midterm. Okay. Right. So, oh yeah, that's something else. I got, I got something to tell y'all. I had to turn in midterms this week. Okay, I didn't know that I had as many high school students in here. I thought y'all were just grown-ups. Anyway, um, I have some people that's not on. My left plus. Oh, wow. Five weeks into the semester, and y'all are not. Did I tell y'all this would happen? I told you the first week. So those two people, I think there's two or three in here that are midterm students, being high school students, and are not on. I gave you a C. So I hope that don't hurt you or anything. But I wasn't going to give you an F because I know you've been coming to class, but you had... There was, how did I know that? Well, they gave me on my midterm list, I have the people that's in my class that are high school students. Jane Smith, blah, 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 Jane Smith, blah, blah, blah. Over here, I have My Lab Plus. Jane Smith is on this, but she's not on My Lab Plus. So what does that mean? She hadn't registered onto My Lab Plus. There's nobody in here named Jane Smith, but then just telling y'all that. I use that as a figment of my imagination. So, you know, some of y'all need to get your head out of your attitude, okay? <laughs> it's five weeks into the semester. You should have the register. You should have taken the first and second test. I'm going to get somebody to come up to me. Don't come up to me today because I'm not in the mood for it, okay? And look like you just come out of a war and say, I haven't registered yet because I really don't want to say what I'm going to say. Give me another couple of days to not late till Thursday, okay? But anyway, I did turn in your midterms for those in high school, so I went by your test. So if you had a bad grade on your test, you got to help. I think everybody did real good, okay? Except for you. I didn't give you one. I gave you an F. Yep. So, what'd you make on the first test? Okay, well then you got an A. Unless I don't like you. If I don't like you, then gave you an F. Alright, so, y'all look like y'all are doing the test. When are the tests due? I have a question about that. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, the homework for chapter 3. Uh -huh. I did that on purpose because y'all should have your homework finished. Okay. That's why. Actually, I should have turned the homework off like a week ago, but I left it open. Okay? But yes, did you get yours done? No, not fully, not chapter three. <laughs> y'all suck. Okay? <laughs> I'll give you a couple more days. Thank you. Don't worry, you're going to fail. <laughs> I'm just going to do all of them. Because if I do chapter three, I'm going to get some, I'm going to get somebody. <laughs> No, because somebody come in here right after spring break and asked me to extend it. No, I'm not going to do that. I know, but that's not directed towards you. I'll give you till 14. Uh, I don't want to hear it. Everybody has to vote for Trump now. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Okay. Respectful. 
No, the problem, the problem is, if you don't know, you, you're, you're doing a little bit of programming. What does the president have to be? What's the two requirements for the president of the United States to be? <laughs> Forty what? Forty-two or forty-three? Thirty-six. And it has to be American citizen. Does it say anything about diplomacy? Does it say anything about being respected? Does it have to be a lawyer? Does it say it have to be a governor? Does it say it have to be a senator? But we put a businessman up there, and oh my gosh, we can't do that because the RNC don't want us to. Don't even start. Don't even get me started. You are going to fail. <laughs> You're not getting what I'm saying. I am getting okay. what I'm saying. Why does he have to be respected? Why does he have to be a certain... Why does more people vote for him if he's respectful? The only two requirements is he's got to be 42 and he's got to be an American citizen. Where does all these other things come into play? No, Cruz is not catching up. He won two menial states. Okay? We need to be alienated. We worried about too many people. I'm sorry. I'm just... I'm just in a bad mood, okay? Y'all got me in a bad mood now, so. <laughs> I have a lady that needs a tutor. Okay. You see the article about the, um, when Becky was back in military school, they stole the classmate. They probably, what did they do? No, they were beat him up and he beat no. them up or what? They were beating up the media for how rude they were. Ah, oh, no. yeah, I saw that. Where the two pictures are side yeah. by side? Yeah. Logarithms. Yeah, I know. Sorry. I, I know there's one or two in here. I want to talk about my half a hundred percent of the time. Because there's always one. There's always one. So we got to do math. So, y'all remember y'all's. Y'all remember y'all's exponential rules? Y'all don't? Okay, well, I'm fixing to put them up there. Exponential rules, exponentially. Exponential rules are the product rule. The product rule says a to the n times a to the m is equal to a to the n plus m. In other words, when there are two bases that are the same, what can you do to the exponents if you're multiplying? You add the exponent. That's called the product rule. Examples. x to the second times x to the fifth is equal to x to the seventh. x to the negative 2 plus I where that came from. We didn't even know I had that on here. Okay. Go away. x to the negative 2 times x to the fifth. What's negative 2 plus 5? x to the third. Okay, so everybody should remember that one. Then there's the quotient rule. Quotient rule. says that if you have a to the n over a to the m, what do you do to the exponents? You subtract them. So again, these bases have to be what? Have to be the same. Examples. x to the fifth 
over x to the second is equal to x to the third. x to the negative fifth over x to the negative fourth is equal to x to the negative five minus the negative four, which is equal to what? x to the negative one, good. And this question right here is the one that gets people, so you might want to practice this if you suck at it, okay? And if you suck at it, that means you got to the negative ninth or something like that. Okay. So that's the quotient rule. So there's two rules. We've got about three more to go. The third rule is called the inver uh, power rule. This one is used a great deal, and it's the easiest one. A to the n raised to the m power. If you have an exponent raised to another exponent, what can you do? Multiply. So that's A to the n times n. So x to the fourth raised to the second power is equal to x to the what? X to the eighth. x to the third to the negative second power is equal to x to the what? Negative six. Now we don't like negative exponents. So we came up with the inverse rule. Now, the first three rules are used for operations. Okay, you can call them the operational rules. Kind of like the first five commandments mean this. And so the first three rules mean operational rules. The second one, I mean the fourth one, has to do with aesthetics. We do not like a negative exponent. We don't like to deal with negative exponents. So four and five basically deal with negative exponents. So it's to make things look prettier, okay? So, what does it mean? It means, I'm gonna get on the mouse because I've looked at y'all and I was going too fast. So, I look on the thing, I'm going to look at too fast. So, x to the negative one is equal to, and I'm gonna put a green over one right here, okay, is equal to one over x. What did I do? I flipped it. Okay? And that negative becomes a positive 1. Now it can also go the other way. If I've got 1 over and then I'll put x to the negative 3 I don't want that negative exponent, so I make it x to the third over what? One. Or just x to the third. Okay? So you need to remember this one. This one is usually used when you don't want to deal with a negative what? Exponent. Some of you use the inverse rule before you use the quotient rule. And that's okay. Some of you will use the inverse rule and then use the product rule versus using the quotient rule because you don't like to deal with the negative exponent. Okay? Does it matter? No. There is no order of operations with exponential rules. You can use all of them differently from each other, different order, but should you come out with the same answer? Yes. Okay? Now, the fifth one is not used very much. It's called the inverse power rule but you will see it being used. And I'm not going to write all that out. I'm just going to say inverse I T R. Okay? Inverse power rule. And you use the inverse power rule whenever you don't want to deal with a negative exponent, whether it be N 
the parentheses or outside the parentheses. So I'm going to just make up one uh, A. I'll just make up the basic A to the N over B to the M raised to the negative depends on where you're from. I say W, but if you're from the perfect part of the United States, you say W. Okay? So that's negative W. Now, remember, this thing has parentheses. Alright? A lot of you, I'm a cat lover, so I'm going to use a cat for a example. I could have a baby tiger and a cat and those two they have very similar aspects. They both have four paws, they both have a tail, they both act the same, mannerisms, but they're not the same, are they? That tiger's gonna grow up to be six hundred pounds, the cat grow up to be thirty. Alright? Are they different animals? Yes. Are they the same species? Yes, they're kind of the same species. I'm not a biologist, I don't know all that stuff, okay? But I know that a cat is a cat is a cat, all right? The inverse power rule plays off of the inverse rule, but it's not the same, okay? Because I'm fixing to do something right here, and somebody's going to say, well, I thought you said that if you flip something, it makes it opposite. No, I said without parentheses. This has parentheses, totally different animal, okay? If you flip what's inside of the parentheses, what will that do to the W? It'll make it what? Positive. So that'll be B to the M over A to the N raised <coughs> to the positive W power. Now, do you have to use the inverse rule? No, can you use the power rule here? Yes, you could use the power rule and make those two negative, negative WN and negative WM, and then use what? The inverse rule and bring one down and bring one up. See, there is no certain way to do these problems. So don't get that in your head. Now, another reason I'm showing you the, the uh, I'm going to show you one more, and that's because you need it for later on if you don't already know it. But the reason I'm showing you these is because logarithms are glorified exponents. Okay? They're glorified exponents. And if you understand how to use exponents, you're going to understand how to do glorified exponents. Capiche? All right. The other one is what I call rational exponent rule. Rational exponent rule. And this is usually not included with the rules, but I include it because... I think that this, a lot of people, I'll show this too, and a lot of people will go, I didn't know that. So I know you need to know it. And that is the square root of x to the first power is equal to x to the what? One half power. And that is the exponent over the index. Exponent over index. I'm going to take my handy dandy highlighter and I'm going to highlight that 2 and that 2 goes in the denominator. I take blue and that blue is right here. So I can write a radical as an exponent, or I can write an exponent as a what? Radical. Is this important? Yes. You cannot get through calculus, for those that are listening, they're not talking while I'm talking. You can't get through calculus without this rule. Okay? So let me give you one more. How about the fourth root of x to the third power? What will that be? X to the three fourths power. Good. Okay.
Now that's all your exponential rules. Now let's get to the logarithmic rules. Now that you can refresh on the exponential rules, let's get to the log rules. Now the very first rule of logarithms, and the one that you need to know first, and let me see if I can pull it up right quick. Where is my sign? There we go. Let's go to ebook. What chapter did you say this was? Five. Five, thank you. Alternate version of your ebook? That's the alternate version. What the heck? Okay, I don't know what they're talking about, but anyway, five. They're talking about your, I don't know what this is, people. Y'all, excuse me, I've never seen this before. <laughs> I'm serious, this is weird. I've never seen this format before. I'm going to go ahead and skip to the logarithms. I think that's uh, probably... There it is. Uh, I'll move them in the property. Here we go. Yeah, definition of logarithm. Need you to write this down. There it is, right there. The bottom of the page, I'll blow it up so you can see it. That's about as big as I can get it, right there. Write that down right there. Yes. No, it won't go any further. I'm so sorry. I should have planned better. and put it up so you can see it. So just hold on. There, is that big enough? This is called the definition of a logarithm. Yeah. Y'all yeah. <laughs> see why I don't care nothing about blowing stuff up? There. Now, of course, you don't need all these words here. A, X is equal to A to the Y. Y is equal to log base A to the X. The way I write it is I say Y is equal to log they say that, and then I put a little double yield, which means all this stuff right here. X is equal a y. All right, somebody tell me what this is. This is a exponential equation, an exponent, and this is a logarithm. A logarithm is a glorified exponent. Hey, I call myself being laid back. And I call myself being faith. Okay? But when pe people keep doing, and people keep pushing, I get what? I get pissed off. Alright, now, you're passing the laid back. I've already shot a warning across the bow. Don't talk while I'm talking. Okay? Alright, so, if you look in the book and you get 8 is equal 2 to the third power. Does everybody agree with that? Then you can write this exponent as a what? A logarithm. So take this this right here, and I want you to write this 
as a logarithm. And you just take your handy dandy highlighter and your x is equal to what? 8. I'm trying to do this so y'all can understand it. Taking the a, what is a? Y'all see a pattern? Oh, I have no idea what you do. Okay. Now I took all these. I took all these colors. Now what am I going to do with all those colors? I'm going to plug them into. If it looks like this, then my answer is going to look like this. If it looks like this, then my answer is going to look like this. Simple as that. So y. Hmm, what is y? Three. We go over here and we say three is equal to log a is what? 2 of what? 8. Now we need to talk about some other properties. That's called the definition of a logarithm. The definition of a logarithm you're going to be tested on a great deal with this unit 3 test. One, you're going to be doing this. All right. You're going to have five or six questions, two or three questions on the test just doing this, going from one way to the other. Very simple. You don't have to do any calculating. You just have to plug and chug. The other test, the other time it's used is solving equations. And I'm going to give you a bunch of those solving equations. And you've got to use the definition of logarithm. So it would be very helpful if you was to what? Learn this. All right? But I'm not going to talk any more about that as far as the plugging and chugging because I think most of y'all can handle going this way or if you're given this, going this way. All right? I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. The next thing I want to talk about is your basic properties of logarithms. And I will go back to my handy dandy book, wherever it is, and I'll pull those up for you if I can find them. They should have a little list. I've never seen this book before. Evidently something's wrong with their e-book. There it is. No, that's not it. They should have them. I'll talk about log base 10 in just a second. I'm not going to talk about that right now. Okay, that's not it. That's not it. There it is. So I'm going to pull these out. Oh, they got them all listed here. Good. We'll just take that out. Get that old sneaking tool. I don't know where it is. And that way, you won't have to. Yeah. Let's There you go. Write those down. Now the first three are very basic. These three right here are pretty basic. You might want to put them to memory because you're going to see that third one, you're going to see it a lot in calculus. Go ahead and write down the other ones also.
All right. Now, if you look on your calculator, and that's fine if you want to get your calculator out, you need to go ahead and find the LOG in the natural log. Now, it's important that you write these two things down. The natural log, I meant the LOG base 10, that's what we call the LOG. LOG base E is what we call what? The natural log. Does it matter? No. You can use the natural log the same way you use LOG. Your calculations will come out the same. Just a preference. Some people like to use X in their equation. Some people like to use Y. It's not a big deal. At this level, that's all that matters. You don't need to... I mean, if you want to go on Google and search it out and find the derivation, that's fine, but you don't need it in a college algebra course. Um, do realize that you cannot take the... You can't calculate any log unless it's log base 10 or log base e. Okay? All right. Questions? I'll leave that on the board for just a second. Now, we got good news and bad news. 